Hey guys, welcome to another video from the team here at BlenderTech.com. Uh, this is part 3 of how to model and rig a crawler excavator. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and learned something, please like it. And don't forget to subscribe for more Blender, Unity 3D, Programming, Photoshop, and all sorts of other videos. We try to add at least one a day. So, um, this is the part that we are going to get to in this portion. Um... I recorded this freestyle late at night, so I might make a few mistakes. I'll try to edit out as much as possible. But basically, we uh, we got the substructure finished, and we got the uh, the idlers finished, and all their pins on both sides. So that was what I considered to be next to the rams. Uh, one of the harder parts of modeling this so that's why it's going to take up most of this um, part and then in the next part we will continue from there uh, so yeah let's get started I'm going to jump right into it so I gave it some thought and I decided that to give this a more wholesome uh, look as we block it in I should get the uh, the drive wheels and the the idlers and the substructure finished and just because it bugs me this uh, main ram i should um i should either leave it or do it as per the drawings i thought of a different way to do it um because at the moment, it's way off from the drawings. Does that really matter too much? No, but it would be nice to have it correct. So, I think I'm actually just going to leave it. And then once we get to the actual... Um, once we get to the point where we need to have it looking correct, then I might fix it. Anyways, yeah, let's work on the substructure. It needs some work. So I'm going to go into edit mode. And I'm basically just going to follow this blueprint on the side here. So from the front, it looks like that's as high or as low as it goes. So it looks like these are actually within the track. So, I could actually make this a separate object, too. But, I put those into the tracks a little bit for a reason, so... We'll see. In fact, maybe I will make it them a separate object. Yeah, because it has like this roller and stuff. So yeah, I'm going to have to. There's going to have to be sufficient room for the idlers. So I'm going to just simply add a new mesh plane then. Rotate along the Y, negative 90. Merge it center. And I lost my vertex. Great. Oh, I'm in line mode. That's why. And I would take it to where there is a corner. About there. So that is going to go straight all the way across. Oh, I did make that on the same object. I did not mean to do that. that there is some a little bit of beveling going on with this. I don't know if I really want to model that too much. I suppose I could though. Just simply fill these in and fill these in and then just give it a little, little bend. 
So we'll fill everything in. Um, take these two verts out of front view. Yeah, maybe we'll bend them in just till they come to this point or something. Not even it's going to have to come out, but that just seems like a good angle to me. Just a few degrees that way. And then the same with, I'll do the same with the lower two here. Just give it a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of uh, bent or beveling. So I'll just grab along the X to that same point. Ooh, there's a lot of verts there. Come on, there we go. Now they're both at the same angle. So, I can fill those in. Whoops. I meant those. And those for now. Why does that look off to me? I guess it's fine. Is it? Must be. I gotta look at this in solid mode. I gotta turn some things off. So let's get rid of the tracks. And the sub. Ah, uh, yes, this went the wrong direction. Grab along the Y, bring it back here, that'll fix it. Still looks off to me, though. I think this one is bad, too. Grab along the Y to there. There we go, now it's nice and straight, I believe. Same with back here. I got unintended beveling. There we go. Double check my normals. Of course, they're all backwards. There we go. So yeah, that's that. And then I think it comes out a little bit. And then there's a ledge for these idler wheels to sit on. But you can't really tell from this view but it definitely has to come out I'd say something to that degree even like really really far out you know what I mean if not even more because in the picture it shows it covering this main wheel which would almost would come out almost all the way to the end of the tread so I would actually wager a guess that this would come something like that. I would actually stick out a little bit. That would be my guess. And then, yeah, it would have a little ledge basically inside. So we might as well model that. And if we turn on the substructure, I would say that it probably goes to that point. Just a guess, but... We'll work with it for now. I would say the same thing for this part down below. So there, something like that I think we'll be able to work with. Just for ease of seeing, maybe we'll give that the yellow color too. And then we're going to turn off my normals. And we'll flip it over to the other side. Turn off that track too. And we will give it a duplication. And then we will scale along the X, negative 1, and grab along the X to there, and then 
grab again along the X, and then that should be basically a near perfect duplicate. I would have to scale all this in a little bit, but that would do it. This would, oh, they're on the same object. I guess that's no issue for now. I'll just call it either structure. Keep the part count down for now. Double check all my normals. I don't know why they get messed messed up when I make an exact duplicate. Weird. Blender and me don't get along when it comes to normals, but that is built of all quads as far as I know so far, so that's a good thing. And yeah, that gives it a little more wholesome look if we turn the tracks back on. So, next up. I really want to work on the cab, but I know that's going to take forever. That's going to be a that's going to be an episode all in itself. So, I'm going to work I'm going to fix these treads up so that they have whoops, the uh the inside little bevel. So, that'll be really easy. We'll just go to uh tread wherever that is. I guess tread L and tread right. Did I instant instance copy them? No, I didn't. So I'm gonna have to manually edit each one. So I'm gonna have to be aware of my dimensions. So I think I'm just gonna take these points and extrude them down. Zero to small one, maybe. We'll try. Zero to small one. Nah, shoot. Then we'll fill that in. Whoa, not what I intended. Then we will quickly turn off mirroring clipping and we'll select this and scale it in. Not too much, just a little bit. Oh, I was going to take note of my values. Scale it in 0 to 0.75, 75%. Perfect. Then we'll re enable clipping and we will take these two vertexes and bring them back to the center. Let's see how that looks. When we go back into object mode, it will wrap right back around. Oh, they could go even further, eh? Like, a lot further. I guess, though, that would kind of give it the look, but I think it's a little bit ridiculous looking in the drawing, to be honest. And I think that looks realistic as it sits. But we might as well go a little bit further, I guess. So, we'll take all four of these and simply stretch it down a lot. Grab along the Y or Z. Negative zero decimal two. What? See, that just looks ridiculous. Another negative zero decimal one. So negative zero decimal two in total. Go into object mode. I think that's as far as I'm going to take it. It's pretty close to the drawings without looking too ridiculous. Maybe if I get rid of these extra like outside little grip things that I put on, it might look better. But, yeah, that's as far as I'm going to take that, I think. So we'll go over to the other side, and we'll do the same. We'll turn the other side off so it's not bugging us. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. The rotator's in the way, I think. So this has got to come down. Did I select extra? I did. 
Should have four selected. Yeah, okay. Extrude along the Z. To that point. And then scale along the Y. 0 to 75. And there we go. Perfect. Go back into object mode. And those should be two exact duplicate copies. See, like, now it's... Now it's basically rubbing on my substructure. I'm going to have to fix that on both sides. So I'm going to have to shorten that up a bit. I guess I can kill two birds with one stone. I forgot they were on the same uh, object. So, Oh, there is a little bit of angling coming the other way too. I didn't notice that. That's interesting. That's why they're rubbing. Let's undo that and instead let's go into wireframe. And maybe I was wrong. Maybe there was no in angle. Maybe the angle was actually only in this direction. might break things. It looks like it did. Yes. Why? Oh, why? Ah, uh, because there's no edge loop cut back there. Um. <laughs> I'm gonna have to remake those. I think. Well, not the entire thing. I'm going to delete one half again, because, yeah. Easier to work with just one. So. Delete this half. Whoops, didn't mean to delete that part. Ooh, I don't have screencast keys on. See, I always forget. All right, so side view, wireframe. Let's give these the proper angle. had to guess it'd be not like that <laughs> if I had to guess that would be one solid object then so I am gonna delete those points delete those points well I don't yeah, I'll delete those points for screw it. Work with just that square again, rectangle. And then just extrude off. I'm gonna stick with what I had. Oh my indecisiveness at times. are backwards though. Oh no, they're the right way. Okay, cool. Or are, are they? Yep, I believe so. Cool. So then I'm simply going to bring this in a little bit. And then I'm going to extrude it out to this point. That's how I believe it should look. That makes sense to me. So then I can duplicate that. I don't need to mirror it this time. I can just grab along the X. Um, to about 
there. Let's turn off that track too. Whoa, grab a lot of X to there. I gotta bring this edge in again a little bit because we didn't center everything properly. Turn the tracks back on. Recalculate the normals because they have to be backwards. Yep. Excellent. And that is that for now. So it's starting to look a little more filled in. You could almost say it looks like an excavator. A very cartoonish one, but they're still blocking in. So then off of here would come all these little supports, I guess, on each side. One on this side, one on this side. And then there'd be a pin in the middle, and there'd probably be two or three rollers. Or one long roller, I guess, more likely. So, we're going to have to model that, too. Hmm. I wonder if I should do that as a separate object as an array. Or... Yeah, I guess I might as well, eh? Yeah, we can do that, so... We will add a plane. Trace them out. I need to turn on line mode now, or edge mode, I guess. Subdivide this. Maybe one more time. Then we'll worry about quads later. Looks good enough for me for now. And we'll add an array. Turn on wireframe, I guess. It looks about, yeah, 3.2 is about almost perfect. A little bit less, somewhere in the middle there. 3.17. Let's see how accurate the drawing is. Let's increase the count all the way. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No! I guess they are not equally spaced, unfortunately. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter as long as they're close, right? That's pretty darn close. I'd say that's good enough. I mean, it's only going to be off by hair, and most of that's probably due to inaccuracies with my modeling or the drawing. I'd say that's close enough, so. Yeah, that'll work for me. We will give those. I think yellow would look a little. Give it black again to kind of offset all the. I'll do that after. Black is hard to see. And whoa, why is it doing that? Okay, clearly. All of that should be moved backwards. To. Or not the Z along the X to there. Whoa, everything's messed up. Okay, we're gonna do this one vert at a time. 
One word at a time. One word at a time. You know that dirty girl she'll be messing with you one word at a time. There, that's better. Now my normals are backwards. Perfect. All right, now they don't really need that much thickness. Like it's probably just a tiny, tiny bit, just enough to get into the rollers here, really. So I'm gonna extrude. Make sure I'm in vertex mode again. Grab along the X. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to that point. That's as thick as they need to be, honestly. And I'm gonna apply my. Maybe I won't apply the array yet. Maybe I'll wait because I do have to cut holes in the mad quads, and if I have to do that over and over and over, that'll suck. So I'll just leave that for now. Recalculate my normals, so it at least looks fine. I can leave the. Actually, I can leave it yellow for now, that's fine. Although, I like the look of black better. So, there. Those are there. And then, there would probably be the same things on the other side here. Turn the tread off. Turn both of them off. So, I'm simply going to duplicate it. Right click. And GX. To about there, and then I'm simply going to go back into edge mode and then GX control, and that should line it up perfectly. Yep, yeah, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Cool, I like that. And then rollers will come easy after. You can do the same thing, just an array, or maybe even model it off this. So yeah, that's cool. Um, might as well duplicate this. So I'm gonna call this just a uh, idler structure brackets. Duplicate that in object mode. Grab along the X. And that should give us, yep, perfect. I will go into left hand mode. Yep, looks fine on this side too, so. Just gotta line them up now, is all. So, we will GX. Yeah, line it up with there, and then take this one. Whoops, so we'll go into edit mode. I'll take this, this one, GX, to, oh, not that far, not like that. Oh, well, darn, GX, just like that. Now they should be perfect. Awesome, you couldn't even tell that there was four there. That means it's working out perfectly. Cool. So that takes care of that. Now we could create the idlers, I guess. Just start simple. Just pick somewhere, somewhere in there. And then, whoops, my brakes. I should turn that off. Don't need them in the middle of the night. Uh, yeah. Alright. So these... Actually, you know what? Looking at this, looks like they ride on this part of the track. Which means that these things are more like teeth. That means they don't go all the way across, so that's going to be a problem. So we're going to have to edit the tracks now too, oh, great. 
This is just going to be a guessing game. I'm going to have to turn clipping off. I'm basically going to have to take this entire edge. Ah, shoot, I grabbed too much. Or no, not that entire edge, just this. Although that will have to come with it. Shoot. Well, we can move that out for now. Way out. I'm thinking somewhere like that. And these will have to come, but if I tried to grab them, it's going to screw things up. So I guess I'll have to delete these lines and just quickly recreate that geometry. So, extrude from there, and then turn on clipping, oops, and move it right to the center. Okay, how come it's not clipping? It's going, oh, I went too far. That's why. Turn on clipping. Now, there we go. Okay, perfect. Now we can extrude straight up to there. And I believe that would be fixed. Just got to fill in these last faces. I hope there isn't excess geometry. It looks like there might be. Yes, there is. Thought merge would take care of that. Um, I don't think it'll matter too much. We can try to remove doubles and see if it fixes it. Otherwise, we'll fix it later. Since right now we're just blocking stuff in. That's how I would see that, though. Just fill in those faces. So why I don't like black, you can't see nothing. There, that looks like it would line up better. And it doesn't give it that super cheesy look. I would even bring it in a little bit further to be honest, but nah, I'll work with that. Um. I guess I'll just delete this one on no big deal and duplicate this. Double on the X. Yeah, now the parenting's all messed up. To clear the parent. Ah, I keep always doing that. Frame, I guess, so I can actually see where does it need to come to. Somewhere in there. All right. That one is tread dot r. Now we can turn our tracks back on and reparent it. See, I always hit that button. Oh, my ver or my origin's all the way over there. Maybe I should fix that first. Oh, it's going to ruin that. What the heck is going on here? Did I have two things selected? Yes, that is going to ruin things. Oh, I knew that. Something bad would happen if I did that. Shoot. Hmm. <laughs> I guess I could manually go and set the origin. No, that won't work 
either. Hmm. What I need to do is undo the movement. There's the duplication. Set origin to geometry. No, that doesn't work either, does it? I need to clear the parent first, I guess. Whoops. That's clear origin, obviously. Didn't know that hotkey existed. Oh, I can't see my keyboard this late at night, even though it's illuminated. Alright. It still messes things up. That's weird. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to have to undo all of that. And I'm going to have to edit this one manually, too. Oh, how wonderful it is modeling a full vehicle to perfection. So, I have to play this fun game again. Make this one yellow so I can see better. Turn off clipping. Great. Oh, it's going the other way. Okay, so yeah, somewhere out there. Is that how we did it? flat on the one side. I don't know, I can't tell, I can't remember now. That should be okay though, let's double check. Oh, I angled those in. Oh, we can do that, I guess. To what point did I angle them in though, I can't remember now. There. Maybe. I don't know. We'll just guess, I guess. I'll go to that point because that's where the gear is going to go in. Let's see, maybe I'll leave it like that. And then. Two points need to come. Might as well just delete them. Or not. We will delete. I'm gonna go to vertex mode again. We delete these two lines. Extrude this down to this point, right? Yes. Extrude that across to that point. Oh, darn. It's hard to work with. And then I should be able to just fill in this face. Fill in the other one first. It's a harder one. That is not anything near quads right now, so that's going to be fun to work with later, but not a big deal. As soon as we can hide everything. Yeah, I should take care of that, as long as we just recalculate the normals, since they seem to be giving me nothing but troubles. And I think they are backwards, or maybe not. Well, we'll just assume that they're right. There. Turn that back into rubber. Those are a lot thinner than the ones on this side. Oh, I didn't even cut those ones in on that side. I thought I did. Did it? What the heck did I do? Oh, 
Oh, I must have accidentally undone that. Son of a... Blah. Well, at least I can edit this part out, I guess. There, that should take care of that on both sides now. Looks pretty good. All right, let's create some rollers. Oh, I forgot about the upper one brackets too. Guess might as well create those. We can just duplicate this. So control D. And we'll set it right there. And we will uh we'll scale Z negative one. These ones are a different shape, just my luck. I guess I'll just uh, drag these up, and that should give us the right profile. Perfect. And while we're at it, we should probably take these and snap it to this line. And now we need to make the offset different. So we're going to play, we need a three. 
that and the offset's got to be way bigger. Whoa, what the heck's going on here? Come on. Play nice. Perfect. Maybe minus four five. Maybe even a touch further, nine to nine five. That's good enough for me. Whoa, everything got stretched out again. Son of a expletive. it I guess. Now we just need to duplicate them onto the other side. So this is idler structure brackets dot upper. What are these ones? You know what I'm gonna make those I should make that all one object, but I think that might ruin the Arraying. Yeah, I can't make them an instance copy because it's not exactly the same on each side. Oh well. Not a big deal. Just do one side at a time. One side at a time. You get it one side at a time. It'll take 60 years, but eventually you'll get it one side at a time. Looks like it lines up already, doesn't it? Yeah. Perfect. So I could have created an instanced copy, I guess. Hmm. Oh, did I just move those over? I think I did. <laughs> uh, whoops, that's... Let's make sure they conform on this side. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, let's do what I meant to do and duplicate them. Shift D, right click, GX, over to this side. I shoot GX, snapping. Those ones fit. Those ones don't. GX and snap it to that edge. I'm actually liking this edge snapping when lining things like this up. It's actually working pretty nicely. I usually use vertex snapping, but this edge snapping is working good too. There, okay, now we have all our idler brackets. That makes me a bit happier. So, yeah, like I said, now we need to create these idlers. We'll use an array for those too since we're going to have to make many of them. But we're just going to rough them in for now. So... We'll start with the mesh circle, I guess. Rotate along the Y, negative 90. Oh, is that setting playing with me again? I thought I had that fixed. Scale it down, and then let's look at it in 3D view. Okay, that's way off. So we need to bring it along the X. Yeah, we'll bring it right on the. You know, we can even bring it out a little bit. It doesn't really matter. And then we'll need to. I guess we could make the pins really quickly as a part of it, just extrude it out. On 
along the X till it goes to the other side, basically. And then we'll have it stick out there just a little. And fill that side in. It's an end gone, but we'll fix that later. Very easy fix. Fill that side in. And then... Oh yeah, we'll just make it all separate objects, I guess. So we'll give this another array. Whoops. And I guess it would need to be the same as here. So six of them. And... Three decimal two two zero. We will try that. And find out. I think it was called circle most likely. Circle zero zero one, I guess. Yes, okay, so three decimal two two zero. No. <laughs> okay. I guess we gotta manually do this. Number wrong. One, two, three, four. Ah, yes. There's more than six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But it still doesn't fit. I guess that's because they're a different size. That would make sense. It's unfortunate that I can't get it perfect, but we can adjust it later once we actually apply the modifier. For now, it's just for looks. Now we have pins up there. So let's create the upper pins. We'll call this lower pins. Duplicate it. Move it all the way over. manually just poke it out a little bit and then it'll poke out on any side so those are lower pins dot r these are lower pins whoops left and now we can just duplicate these also Hey, that was a good guess. Now I need three of them. Whoops. That way, we're just going to increase the offset till it lines up roughly. Because it works so it's easier when you have less. Perfect. So these are upper pins.l. sticking out properly which is ever so slightly it's hard to see I'll turn off the substructure yep perfect cool now we just need to duplicate them try that again grab along the X GX I should be poking out ever so slightly or a little too far but that's easily fixed same with these ones there cool so now we have pins starting to take on some more realism all right now for these idlers so I think what I'm gonna do set my cursor to selected now it'll set my oh wrong side <laughs> cursor to selected that'll set my origin right there and I 
can create a new mesh circle. Rotate along the Y, negative 90. Scale it down. And that's the inner part. So we're going to edit mode. We can fill that in. And then grab it along the X ever so slightly. So we don't we want it to be just inside of this rubber part here. That'll work, I think. Then we need to just simply extrude out. So right click and then scale. That'll give us quads to work with. And drawings are pretty darn accurate because that touches basically perfectly. It's hard to see. That's a little bit easier to see. But yeah, basically touches perfectly. We can scale it down a little bit. I can't rotate. I'd have to rotate the whole thing. But if we rotated it slightly along the Y, well, that won't work along the X, I mean, we could have them totally flat. It'd be 15 degrees, I believe, based on 32 divided by 320 divided by 32. And we could scale it up until it just touches this line. Okay, my math wasn't perfect, but it was close. Never said I was a math genius. All right. Now we just got to... No, maybe we'll... Oh, we can. We got everything selected. Take this edge loop. This edge loop. I'm holding down Alt and Shift to do that. Oh, that's not going to work, no. That will create the inside, but not the way I wanted. Oh well, no big deal. Easy fix. So we just need to line this up now with the inside of here. Perfect. Then we'll take this edge loop and we'll extrude it back to the same point. Now that's going to create some unsightliness. So I am going to go like that. That's how I originally intended this to look. I want this to be a separate piece if possible, but no, it's just linked together. Unfortunately. Oh well, no big deal. However, that big face there it needs to be extruded out again and grabbed back to here, roughly. Come on. Oh, am I on line snapping? Let's go vertex. Oops. Right to there. Perfect. Okay, I think I have it looking proper now yes okay perfect all we need to do is pull that in a little bit this face right here pull it out I guess ah shoot actually it's these that need to come in in a little bit so we're gonna have to turn off view selection to visible and we're gonna have to go into wireframe anyway Frick. Ooh, I know an easy way to do this um go back to solid and just select two and go control numpad plus that's asterisk plus to grow the selection oh that's not gonna work it was almost working let's see if I can do it like Nope. <laughs> uh, let's try.
try just one. No. Shoot. It was going oh so right, too. Uh, one at a time, I guess, manually. Now I gotta go into Wi-Fi and make sure I'm getting the right ones. That's not what I wanted. There we go. Alright, that should work. And just GX, just a hair like we did on the other side. Perfect, alright. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to grab this, that plus. Those inside faces too. Shoot. Oh. Okay. Hey, that might have worked that time. That grabbed the entire cylinder. Then if we went into, if we grab this face too, if possible, oh, that's one big face there, isn't it? Oh, there is no end cap, okay. So while I'm at it, yeah, I'm going to separate this by selection. Go control P, separate by selection. I don't know what to call this, uh, inside roller. Sorry if I'm not explaining this very well, guys. I guess I'm just doing this more as personal, and hopefully you can follow along. I'm just going to call this rollers. There's the inside rollers. Rollers.inside. So, the rollers.inside, I wanted to give them like a chrome-ish material. Brush stainless, and then the outside I wanted to give black, the rubber material, or even body paint black, just for a little bit of difference. And then this pin, I wanted that to, whoops, I wanted that to be chrome. Ah, shoot, now I created an extra material, oh well, we'll use it somewhere. And then we just need to go to this side. Take this and fill in that face. So we'll alt right click on an edge loop with edge selection and fill that in. Make sure it's assigned that. And then we will check our normals since they've been nothing but nice to me. And of course, they're all wrong. So recalculate. Yeah, that's good. These are sorry, so that's good. I'll check this one. Oh, I'm not in edit mode. Recalculate should be good. Yep. Check this one. That one is good. Double check that I made sure this one was good. Yep, awesome. All right, now we need to create an array for that whole shebang a bang the rollers or these lower pins I should just join these all together into one unit
Just create a little cube down here to parent them to. Just call this lower idlers. And then these call lower idlers dot left. So those, those, and those can be parented to that. Yeah, all of these need a modifier. So it should be the same for everyone. 6.580. We'll try it. Six point five three zero? Six point five eight zero. going to be different for each of them, actually, what we're thinking. So tiny. So I have to go into wireframe. Line it up manually. And this latest change has a big effect. But that'll be close enough for now. And then, that's done. We just need the inside ones now. Give them an already. Eight of those. That looks pretty darn close. Oh, I got some weird geometry in there. Oh well, I'll fix that later. Just the beginning of our quad adventure that'll be ours in itself. Do this one manually, otherwise it's gonna look real ugly. Two decimal zero zero one, not bigger than that. Two decimal zero one, nope. Two decimal zero zero five, that is pretty close. Zero six, nope. In between there, zero 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 nine. Oh, where to go? Okay. Just round it up. Zero, zero, zero. No. Zero, zero, zero. Seven. Six. Five, seven, five. See, Blender does take that into account, but then it rounds it up as a view, but the value's still there. Zero, zero, five, seven, zero. Close. How do we go a little bit closer? Zero decimal zero zero five. That was seven zero. It was. So five six nine. Oops. Five six eight. Five six six. So there, that's the value for those two decimals. There's five six six, or not five six seven. Two decimals zero zero five six seven. I don't know why I'm being so accurate. I don't think it'll even work on the other ones. Hey, what do you know? It did. Those are bang freaking on. I guess it. I guess it pays to be accurate sometimes. Alright, cool. So that is that side done. That is starting to look pretty cool. Now we need to just create the upper ones. So, I wish I could duplicate the empty and have it duplicate all the objects within it. But that's not going to happen. So this is going to be upper idlers dot l now we 
just need to duplicate these three up. Oh, we already have pins, don't we? Yeah, so let's parent those first. It's upper pins. So we'll parent that to upper idlers. Control P. I just wish there was a way to get rid of those lines. If you guys could tell me, let me know. The origin to origin point lines. Anyways, uh, yeah, we need to duplicate these and these. So, control Shift D, I mean. Could be somewhere in there. Oh, they're going to be parented. I need to clear the parent. So as long as this is close, it doesn't really matter. I guess this line is coming in useful one time. Center this perfectly, even though we don't really need to, because the inside of the pins you never really see. You just whoa, okay, I gotta grab them along the X quite a bit, obviously. Yeah, till somewhere in there. Check the in out oh, the other side. Ooh, are these ones? Why are they looking weird on me? Uh, it's got to come this way a little bit. Not quite that far, but almost about there. We'll try. Yeah, that's, that's a good spacing, I guess. However, oh, that's what happened is... This face didn't fill in normally. Ah, whatever. We'll fix it later. You don't see it from for now. So we just need to fix the uh, the amount. We need three of those. will parent these while I'm at it to upper idlers dot L control P set parent to object okay so the rollers first I guess go to side view turn on wireframe and line this up Close enough. Yep, that'll work. And then these ones. Again, if we don't do this accurately, it's going to look ugly, so we're going to have to get it real close. That is pretty close right there. It seems to be a little bit negative, negative direction, so. 4 decimal 3 2 5 we'll try just slightly over so 3 decimal 3 2 5 3 2 6 was too much so 3 2 5 5 too much 3 2 5 3 too much 3 2 5 2 too much 3 2 5 1 too little 3 2 5 1 5 Bang on. Rock and roll. Alright, that is that entire side done, more or less for now. We will have to uh, edit this substructure because the rollers are obviously... We'll have to do something about that. But for now, it's fine. We'll have to make some sort of inset, I guess. A little... Yeah, that'll look cool, actually. We'll have to create a little cutout. That'll look cool. It'll create a heck of a lot more work on it comes time to triangulate and quad everything but it'll look cool so now I need to duplicate this other to the other side it's a lot of work for these little things I knew that these and the rams would be the toughest things and I'm not excited about the drive wheels I've never been able to have an easy time with things like those so yeah we just need to duplicate all of these objects across 
Oh no, we don't need the pins. Sorry. Just these. So shift D. Perfect. Right click, control P, clear parent. Alt P, I mean. Clear parent. Then GX and move them over. And get them about right. Yeah, something like that'll work. Now we got the ugly side on this side, though. It's the only problem, so I might be fixing that sooner rather than later, because that's on all of them. <laughs> oh, well. It'll be an easy fix. No big deal. All right. We could just parent these all now. Into... What are the pins? Are they parented to anything? No, it's upper pins and lower pins. Dot right. So I'm gonna create a new empty right about here. Scale it down. Move it somewhere in the middle. I take these, 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 and these, and parent it to there. That empty I will call idler. Oops, cap lock. Idlers dot r. I still didn't get my capital in there. What the heck? Then I guess there's no sense. Having why is that parent at all weird? Oh, that's for the tracks. There's no sense having. Whoops. Yeah, that's gonna happen, I guess. <laughs> Till I clear the parent. There's, well, whatever. We'll just leave the parenting as it is there for now. This, like I said, this is starting to get really full. That's why I start to parent stuff, but. Well, we'll create a single parent for these rollers after. I've had enough of these rollers. So we'll turn the substructure back on. See what this looks like. Yeah, that starts to really give it some life. Once we get those drive wheels in there. Oops. What am I doing now? I'm focusing. Once we get those drive wheels in there. Oh, really look nice. I'm gonna hide that. Hide that. And hide that. Yeah, that'll really look nice once we get the drive wheels in there. So I think I'm gonna leave it off there. I'm gonna save. And then I'm gonna save a new version for next time. Three. So in the next episode, we will be creating the drive wheels will be creating the brackets which I said I would do this time but I didn't think those drive wheels would take so long we will maybe do a few touch-ups and then do the cab and then just go from there just keep finessing and finessing and finessing until it looks realistic let's see what it looks like rendered that nice chrome on the rollers and such. Oh yeah, that looks pretty nice. And the brushed, that looks pretty cool. Except these ones, I didn't make chrome. Yeah, that's chrome shiny. The upper ones I didn't. Chrome shiny. I guess it looks more shiny. Did I turn my sun off? No, it's on. Huh, weird. You can tell they're really shiny there, but oh, maybe, maybe I have backwards normals. Because that is shiny in there. Ah, whatever. We'll, 
not worrying about it now because I'm going to have to go and play with it all anyway. So yeah, that is that for now. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching another video from the team here at BlenderTech.com. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, please like and don't forget to subscribe for more Unity, Blender, Photoshop, coding, and all sorts of other tutorials. If you didn't like this video for some reason, please comment or email us at infoblendertech.com about why not so that we can improve our videos. That's it for now. Um, we also take tutorial requests. So, if there's something you'd like to see, let us know. Whoops, I'm breaking my... Vehicle now. Let's forget about that. We won't save that. We also take tutorial requests, so if there's something you'd like to see, let us know. And we also offer hard copies of our videos now, so if there's one you'd like to download and you don't have a YouTube downloader, just let us know and we will upload it to our service for you. Anyway, see you guys next time.